Hey there, today we're taking a quick look at Google's built-in filter tool. So the filter function allows you to edit your filtered view. So let's take a look at this real quick. So first off, let's get the filter on the tab. So if we just click anywhere in the data, we go up to here to data, click create a filter. And you'll see it now, there's a highlight green, and this is showing um, the columns that are selected in the filter. And then again, here on the side, it's showing the rows are selected. So if I scroll down to the bottom real quick, you'll see that it automatically grabbed to the bottom of the data set. So how does it work? Well, let's take a look at quantity, for example. Let's say I want to look at everyone that ordered more than one. So I just click on this little icon. And then here I can see um, a selection, one, two, three. So I can go th through here. Um, that's one way to handle it. Another is condition. So let's just do condition. So let's just say greater than one. And voila, all the ones disappear and all I see is two and threes. And if there's anything bigger than three, that would also be showed. This is basically anything greater than one, but not equal, not including one, because that would be greater than or equal to. So this is everything that's greater than one. Now what I see is, let's say I got a two here and, um, they updated the order, now they're ordering three. I can type in that three there, and as you can see, it's updated, nothing broke. So that is the greatest benefit of using this filter tool, is it allows you to manipulate the data you're seeing without um, um, taking away your ability to edit. So let's just go back to this skew. Let's, let's get rid of this one. So the way to get rid of these conditions is go back to none, no filter, Hit OK, boom, we're back to what we were. So let's say we want to go back to here and we want to just select Ninja Power Jump. So here what I'll do is I'll hit Clear All and the checked ones are the ones that are going to show up. So if I hit this, Enter, and now that's the only one showing up. I can also filter by more than one column. So we can do the same thing. We can actually bring this back, say greater than one, and now I have only those greater than one that are also that skew. Maybe I also want to filter by date. So I can come over here by date, you'll again see that I have this selection. So I could select a certain date if I wanted to from here. I could type one in. I could see if there's anything on 2520, which looks like there isn't. Let's go to 420. Look at that, there's one for 2420. Um, but let's not do that right now. Let's do condition again. So you see under these conditions, there's a bunch of different ones. Um, so you'll see ones for doing text, um, and you can select ones that contain text or something. Maybe um, if I had a couple different projects, I could just check for Ninja um, if I do text contains or text starts with. Um, that also works with SKUs if you're trying to um, select all SKUs, including variations, and maybe they all start with the same three letters or something. Um, you can do starts with, and then it'll pick up that SKU with all the variations. But what we're doing here right now is, sorry, is dates. So there's two, two ways you can handle dates. One is using the date functions they have here. Date is equal to a certain date. Date is before a certain date. Date is after a certain date. You can also just use the math on it. Um, and the reason this is cool is because you can do is between or is not in between. And so I think is between is probably the most common one um, because then I can pick two dates and see everything between. So let's just say 2, 1, 20, and 2, 28, 20. Hit OK. And now I see everything for February of 2020 from this SKU and with a quantity of two or more, or greater than zero, or greater than one, I'm sorry. Um, so this is a quick way to be able to filter across multiple different columns and still be able to edit the data you're working with. So reset any of your filters that you selected, and you can see visually the ones you've selected because the icon changes to this filter icon. So to get rid of these conditional ones, when it says is between, you just go back up to none, hit OK. Same, and then when it's like this, and you only got one checked, you can just do select all, hit OK. And then again in condition, go back to none, OK. So that's how that works really quickly um, on this data set. 
So let me look at that Google filter. Um, let's just say we added it on this sheet. Now you'll see that it's only selected down to 33, even though I have blanks down below. And so Google's pretty good about adding new data. So let me just copy some data. I'm just going to throw it in here. So first off, if I just do it right here, right below, you'll see the green line jump down to the bottom, and then the green rows here on the side jump down to include it. And so you can see that picked it up. But let's say we got we skipped a row. That green line didn't move. Google filtered and automatically include that data. <coughs> so let's just put some bigger numbers in here just to demonstrate this. If I go to price now, I don't see those options in here. So the best way to resolve this <coughs> is including blanks, all, the whole sheet. So what we do here, if it's already on, the filter is already on, turn off the filter. Now you want to select your entire entire tab. And the best way to do that is between A and 1, click on right there, that little square, and you'll see the whole data set. Actually, the whole, the whole tab is selected now. Now if you go back and create the filter, it includes all the blank rows in the filter. And the one thing it does change, and you'll see that in a second, is that now you have a line for blanks. And that is something you can just uncheck. And you'll see here now it's only showing the rows of data. And that is one way to handle that. Um, go back to select all. Now we'll include our blanks again. <coughs> um, so it does add a, another option when you're dealing with your filters. Um, but it is a way to make sure that all your data will always be included. Um, although so it won't get dropped if the blank row happens to get included somewhere. So I just wanted to make sure that I address that because that's something that um, several people have run into and that is how you address it. <laughs> um, let's see, let's just go to lead management and this is a little different spreadsheet. I just want to show you this um, to lead into our next one. So let's go ahead and add our filter. And now you'll see we have some new new columns. We have status, region, and sales rep. So what you're likely to do in like a lead management kind of um, spreadsheet is you're going to want to see by status. Maybe you want to see by sales rep. If Peter's coming in here working on, on his leads, he's going to want to come in here and select Peter and just see the leads he wants to work with instead of having to wade through everyone else. And then maybe John comes in later, if he checks here, has to uncheck here, now John can come in, or Sheena. Um, and so that you can do this clear all, select all, clear, select, clear, click Sheena. And then over here, she can select if she wants to work a particular set of status level. Maybe she only wants to work with warm and hot. And so she can then select there. Maybe she wants to also narrow down by region. Maybe she's just working the north and east. And then now she has a smaller data set to work with. She can update the status if that changes during her time with them. And so forth. So that's a quick way to do this. The one downfall, and that's where we're going to get into slicers in a second, is if Sheena is working on her leads and then oh Kaya comes in and she's she's working too in the same spreadsheet she's going to see what Sheena already put in she's going to see the same view and so this is where slicers come into play so when you have multiple people looking at the same data set and they want to see different views, the best way or the easiest way is to use slicers. So we'll just go ahead and add a slicer. And it's going to prompt you to select the, the column. So this, the filter automatically selects all columns. The slicer, one slicer button per column. So let's go ahead and choose sales rep. I'm going to go ahead and shrink this button down a little bit. You can move it around, makes it convenient. Maybe I want to customize it a little bit. You can do this customization in the back end. And there we go. Let's, let's call that good for now. 
So now we can do the same kind of filtering that we did with the filter, except for now this is only going to apply to the the one using the filter. So whoever's if John's in here in a copy of this or uh, he has the spreadsheet open in his browser and he selected this slicer filter, you can see his his leads and if Linnell's in here working on his leads, he can select on his own slicer, Linnell, and they can both work simultaneously on their own. So that is a real cool feature with using this slicer. You can add multiple slicers. Um, looks like it didn't select the right data. Let's just drop that reference. There we go. Threw it off because I had that, that top row in there. But it kind of walked me through. So let's go ahead and, and add status. We'll do the same customization here. Let me actually make this a little smaller. Put it right there. Now I can select, John has his selected. Now he's going to work on his hot and warm leads. And just like that. And so you can add more if you want to add. And you'll notice now it's cut off the text there. So you can adjust these if you need to. But now you can see how you can use multiple slicers. And the, the nice thing is it doesn't affect different people's view of the spreadsheet if you have multiple people working in the same spreadsheet at the same time. And so that's the cool thing about fil or slicers is it works very much the same as the filters, but it's uh, handy when you have multiple people using it. So I think that's pretty much it for today. Um, I just wanted to kind of lay that out for you guys. A lot of people don't really know how to use the filter. Uh, maybe it's not something I really used before, but it's definitely a very handy tool to know how to use. So that's it for today. Thank you very much, folks.